Hey there and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be doing a total makeover on our kitchen for $500. If you're new to my channel, my name is Lauren Nicholson and I love to do all things home cooking, cleaning, decorating, and DIY. And I would love it if you would subscribe. I am so excited to be sharing today's tutorial with you. Let's jump right into it. So for this DIY project, we are going to be cleaning the cabinets, painting them, and then sanding the countertops and painting them as well. I have a couple new fixtures and we're also gonna be adding some new hardware to the cabinets. So to get started, my husband has already removed all of the hardware from the old cabinets and I am using Dawn dish soap and hot water and just cleaning them and getting all the oil and grease. This is a very important part when using the, the type of paint that we're gonna be using on these cabinets, which I will talk about in a minute. Once you get everything clean, allow it to thoroughly dry and then remove all of your cabinets. We are going to actually be painting those out in the garage and we are going to just be painting the faces in here. To get started, I'm going to add some blue tape on the appliances and things that I don't want to get any paint on them. Please note that I am not going to be taping off our countertops because we are going to be painting them white anyway. So if a little paint gets on them, I don't worry about it too much. But if you have really beautiful countertops that you don't want to see get paint on them, definitely cover those as well. So once you have everything taped and all the faces removed, we're going to start painting. Now I'm using a paint called Beyond Paint. I'm using it in the color bright white for all the cabinets. We will be using the color Licorice, which is a beautiful dark black for the island. What I love about Beyond Paint is there's no sanding, there's no stripping, there's no primer. I can just put this paint right on and it's beautiful. The coverage is exceptional. I love that this white comes with tones of black in it and not browns or yellows or blues. It's it's a very true white, which I just think is beautiful. I would highly recommend using gloves when doing this project, especially if you have a nice manicure like I did. So to get started, we're gonna be putting one coat on everything around the kitchen. I'm using three different types of paint brushes. I have a sponge paintbrush, angled brush, and then I also have a roller. So I will go around and use the little brush for all these small details, and then I will use a roller for like the large fronts where I can. Since I am going to be doing the uh, insides of these I'm using a much smaller roller for that area as well this paint is very forgiving so if you do accidentally drip it on anything I keep a little bowl of water and a rag and just wipe it right up you will see later in this video that I did end up getting it all over the countertops and I got it right up very easily so for these drawers I am just going through and painting the insides the outsides and then leaving them open to dry this makes it very easy for the first coat to dry and then we will see how well the oak bleeds and if it's too much, we'll do a second and third coat. I would say to get enough paint for two coats at minimum. And the other piece of advice I would give you is get more paint than you think you're gonna need. That way, if you start the project and you end up needing a little bit more, you don't have to wait for shipping. This took me about five days to get in shipping. I ordered two gallons and I still have some left over for this kitchen. So definitely take a look at the size of your kitchen versus mine and order as much as you think you're gonna need for the entire project because you don't want to get halfway started to only find out that you need more paint. To give you a sense of how far this paint goes, that's all I've used so far and I've already finished pretty much all of the top cabinets and the side. So this paint goes a very long way and it's super durable. So if you guys are looking for a paint to do a project like this, I highly recommend the Beyond Paint All-in-One. <music>
So that took me three hours to do. Here is how the first coat turned out. It already looks so different in here and so beautiful, but you can see down below and around here that the oak is starting to bleed. So we are definitely gonna need to do another coat or two, but so far it has turned out so beautiful. I cannot wait to see the finished product. So one piece of advice I would give you, if you do have a little bit of this paint that gets on the floor or on anything, don't stress. It, it really comes up nice and easy. You can use anything from Dawn dish soap. I'm using just a degreaser. It's a very simple, it's a Mr. Clean product, nothing special. And I'm just using like a Brillo pad or like you could even use a sponge. It comes right up. Even the really thick ones that you think are not gonna come up, just scrub it a little bit and it'll pop right off. After I let the first coat dry for about an hour, I went ahead and did the second coat. Didn't film it because I think you guys kind of get the idea of how it goes, but it already looks so good. The paint turned out very thick. I do not need to do a third coat in here. I will be doing the island later in this video, but it turned out really beautiful. We're gonna let this dry overnight and then touch up any spots that bleed. There's two spots in this kitchen that kind of had a little bleeding. So we're gonna go back over those in the morning and then we're also gonna put all the faces of the cabinets back on. But here's how it turned out. It looks so glossy and beautiful. I love that there is a slight sheen to this paint. It's not matte. I feel like you can get the matte version. They do sell it, but I kind of find the sheen gives it a luxurious, rich kind of look to it. And I just think this turns out beautiful. So now we're going to get started on the island. I asked you guys over on my Instagram at Mrs. Lauren Nicholson what color you thought we should do and you all picked black. Well, I would say 80% of you. So we are going to go with black. I picked the color Licorice by Beyond Paint and I will tell you this is the same color that we ended up painting the staircase and it turned out beautiful. I didn't need as much paint for this project. The black has excellent coverage so I highly recommend both but I will obviously link this all down below if you guys are looking for something similar. I do love how this turns out. The contrast of the black with the white countertops turns out beautiful. So the next part of our kitchen makeover is I'm actually going to be painting our countertops. These green countertops are beautiful, but I feel like it brings too much darkness into the kitchen space. So we're gonna be painting them by using the Gianni countertop marble kit. They have all kinds of different types. So if you're looking for a black top or something more granite looking, definitely check them out. I will link them down below, or you can find them over at places like um, Home Depot has them and many places like that. But to get started, we're gonna scarify or sand the countertops and really deep clean them and get them ready to receive this beautiful primer that we're gonna put on next. Go ahead and go around all your countertops and sand them down. Step one is adding our primer. I have my wonderful husband here helping me so I can film this, but we're gonna be using just a very simple primer that comes in the kit. Everything is labeled and there's a great direction book for you. They also have great videos online to show you how to do this. So we're gonna be just using the primer and get it all over the countertops using just one coat of this. If you feel like it's too dark, you're definitely welcome to use two coats if needed. Here is how the first coat came out. You will see that we will need two coats since our countertops are pretty dark. Another thing I would tell you is if you do have any grout on here or you have any caulking in here, definitely take that off prior to getting started. As you can see here, I've already removed it because the paint and the epoxy will pool up in those areas. Once this is all done, we will go ahead and caulk this ourselves and make it look beautiful again. Also, we had clear caulking in here and I didn't love that. I wanted it to be white and match the countertops. So the next day we ended up 
adding another coat. Here's how that's turning out. If there are any areas we felt that were pulling a little bit darker, we would add even a third coat. There was plenty in these two little cans to do our countertops. We used two boxes of the Gianni marble kit. So make sure you get as much as you need. Again, with this type of project, you would rather have more than less. There would be nothing worse than starting this project and halfway through realizing you need either more epoxy or more paint. So get as much as you need. They have some great resources on their website for you to look at if you are looking to figure out how much you're gonna need to cover a space. We will be doing this in a couple other areas in our house and I will continue to share those journeys as we go. Don't forget to subscribe. So far we have all the cabinets painted and the countertops primed and now it's time to start painting. Now I will say one of the parts of this project that made me the most nervous was painting the veining on the countertops but it actually turns out really beautiful. I'm going to give you lots of tips and tricks along the way but to get started we went to the one corner of our kitchen where people don't spend a lot of time and my husband and I are just practicing over there to see kind of the veining we want. I know that I definitely don't want dark veining like our other house, I wanted it more cloudy but we'll share that with you in a minute. So here's where we are with this project. This kit comes with a gray and a white um, spray bottle and then these are the paints that we've been using. So I had my husband take the first stab since I've been so sick and um, this area didn't turn out the way we wanted it so we just put another coat of primer back over it. We're going to start over and like the gray in here just looked really dirty to me, so I'm going to paint through all of this. This area turned out really nice. I actually don't mind this part as much, but we need to go in and make the lines not look so much like paint lines, which isn't hard to do with this product. Um, like over here, just a little bit too dirty for me. And on this area, we tried a darker veining, um, which right now we're kind of going through with a gray brush like this um, and you kind of just dab it like this because you want to break that line up ideally if you're going to do this once you put the line down you should immediately use the spray bottle and start breaking it apart so that you don't get these defined lines you get more of like a um, ghost of gray and over here it's even darker so um, so we're gonna work on this today and hopefully finish this project. I wanted to give you guys an overview. Um, so we will most likely end up just putting a, like this turned out much better, but we'll most likely end up putting just a white uh, coat of paint over this. But here's how the kitchen is looking right now. Definitely looks different, I'll tell you that. But we got a lot to do today, so let's get to work. So if you are Bob Ross or an artist, you can definitely fast forward through this part, but what I'm showing you are different techniques using different sizes of brushes and how to get that beautiful faux looking um, veining on the marble. I like to use this large brush to create more of a cloudy gray. I just find it to be much more beautiful than the thin lines, which we do have at our other house. Our other house is real marble, so it's a little bit more authentic, but what I'm gonna do is just try to decide exactly what veining I'm looking for, and then I'm gonna use that technique throughout this space. I definitely want this to be way lighter than this. You can also use the white paint, mix it with the gray paint to create lighter gray.
Once you have a pretty good idea of the type of veining you're looking for, you can do a couple things. One, you can do a diagram on a piece of paper of your kitchen and actually draw out the flow of your veining that you want to do. I already had it kind of in my mind, so I didn't end up doing that. And then you can start your process. I'm using a little foam, uh, little sponge here. I'm using a spray bottle of water. That's gonna help break that line up and create the effect that I'm looking for. And then use different styles of brushes to create the authenticity of the veining. Go through the kitchen and continue to slowly add in the veining the way you would like to see it. So here is how the veining turned out. This is much more the style I was looking for. So some thinner, cloudier veining. And then we are gonna actually go over this with a very light white color to try to subdue it a little. I don't want it to draw away too much from the kitchen, but I'm gonna take this technique and I'm gonna put it through the rest of the kitchen and then we will get our epoxy on. Okay guys, so here's where we're at. Um, I finished this side. Here's how it turned out. I wanted some kind of darker veining here and then some muted um, veining throughout. Sorry about the light. And over here it's a little bit darker, but it turned out beautiful. I also, you probably can't see it there, but in here I kind of created the effect of like it's coming up over and it turned out beautiful so I've got some darker veining throughout some lighter and um we're going to keep working and I'll see you back here in a little bit. So to create the clouded effect I'm looking for, I am going to take some of the white paint and I'm just going to slowly start rolling one very thin layer over. You will see the gray pops through beautifully and creates a nice cloud effect over the countertop, which will not show so much of the dark strokes. If you feel that it's not pulling through enough, just keep moving that paint around. It will slowly start to show more of the gray through. I'm gonna do this throughout the kitchen and then I'm gonna show you how we epoxy. Okay guys, so here we are. We have now painted this top. I love how this has turned out. It created just a nice, foggy, beautiful, um, very light veining here. Um, I might go over it a couple more areas and just bring in some more detail through here. But for the most part, this turned out really nice. I need to touch that up. So we're gonna do the same thing over here. I know it's hard to see, but we'll do that. And then we will do the island, but I think this turned out really beautiful.
The next step after we have all of that done is to actually put the epoxy on, which again was a little scary, but it actually turns out super easy. Go ahead and take the protective plastic stuff that they gave you in the box and go ahead and just cover all the countertops. What's going to happen is once you pour the epoxy on, it is self settling, but at sometimes it will go over the edge of the counter, especially if your counters are like mine. We're actually quite lucky that we have rounded edges because I've heard that the flat edges can be a little tricky. So definitely find a YouTube video that shares more information on how to make sure that that seam is completely clean and doesn't kind of pull up over the edge. So our method here is to just use the roller, push the epoxy over and just let it fall down on this plastic sheet. This will create a very easy and nice clean edge on the bottom. Before you begin to epoxy, I highly recommend taking the time to thoroughly read the directions because the activator and the epoxy to mix it perfectly has to be timed and mixed for three minutes and 30 seconds. You're gonna to wanna to set a timer for that one for sure. So to get started, I am just going to use a nice little S curve and add the epoxy and then move it around. You have 30 minutes to get the epoxy in place before it starts to dry. If you do make any mistakes, there are some very specific tips that they share with you in the box on how to fix those. So to do this, since we have such a large amount of counter space, my husband will be doing the rolling and I will be mixing the epoxy so we can keep moving pretty quickly. The epoxy covers only six feet of space. So for a lot of these spaces, I had to use two cans or a can and a half to get the project done. So we wanted to do that together. If you are going to be doing a large space, I highly recommend having a friend or somebody help you out. So here is how the epoxy turned out. There's all kinds of tips on if you get bubbling or if anything gets stuck in here that you can use to make sure that doesn't happen. We did not have any bubbling with this particular project, but I do know some people do have that issue. So definitely check the instructions for how to remedy that. But this turned out beautiful. If you guys are on my channel and kind of watch the day by day when we were doing this, we did get a tiny little... I, he's like a little fly that got stuck in here in the night and we love him. He has now become a part of our family. We named him Hornitos. I don't know why, but that's just what we named him. So while this is drying, I highly recommend going underneath all the countertops because the drip marks, as you can see here, will naturally start to puddle underneath here. That's just part of the way the epoxy works. So keep going around until it's nice and clean. You will want to let this dry for three days. So here is how everything looks. The counters have cured. They are so beautiful. Our veining turned out perfect. Everything turned out really beautiful. I know it's bright in here, sorry. It's a little hard to see. But here's how this all turned out. We did get one little fly that flew in here in the night. We named him Hornitos. And um, whatever, he's part of the family now, so it's all good. And then here's how the other veining turned out. Just looks great. Some of the things that did happen during this project, we did um, have some of the paint peeled off from the um, epoxy, which does happen, so be prepared for that. That's why I didn't do any of this touch up. If you guys recall in the video, like the first or second video, remember I had this? I decided not to finish that until this whole project was done. So we have lots of little, I need to do some caulking in here. And like, there's a lot of little things like that. The other thing I noticed was like under here, there's a lot of areas that could really benefit from another coat. See like that's, we need to paint that. And then up there. So there's still lots to do here. Um, I saw this here yesterday. So today we are going to finish painting this house. We're gonna go cabinet by cabinet. 
them here it's a little bit yellow so again some bleeding happens from time to time that's why you want to give it you know enough time to um, fully dry before you finish your very last coat but here's how this veining turned out so shiny and pretty um, we're gonna recock this sink it needed to be done anyway here's some other mistakes we made um, this is uh, epoxy that kind of like dripped but we're gonna take this out eventually anyway so not like a total loss but again these are just little mistakes that we made that I'm showing for you guys uh, so hopefully you don't make the same mistakes we did but anyway we have a lot to do today. So. The first thing we're gonna do is actually start touching our paint up. I have a little bit of Beyond Paint in here that I'm just gonna go through and touch up areas of the kitchen that either I didn't see when I was working on this project or possibly it got a little ruined during the entire kitchen transformation. You can go around your entire kitchen and just touch things up before we actually start the caulking. That way we can do one project at a time. I also noted that baseboards looked a little bit dull compared to the rest of the paint, so I decided to just cut in an extra fresh layer just to brighten this area up. If you did have caulking around your kitchen and you need to replace it, now would be a great time to do that. Since you're done with the countertops, everything has cured. I would wait seven days prior to doing this. Just go ahead and go around the kitchen and reapply the caulking that you need. If you used a darker granite kit, try to find one that matches that as well. A clear one would do well if you want to just kind of keep a thin layer on to keep your countertop safe. So the final touch for this kitchen is to add the hardware. I went with a beautiful gold accent with an elongated end just to make it look a little more streamlined and beautiful. I love how this part turns out. I did try a couple different ones and this one seemed to be the one that fit best in this space, but go ahead and find one that you like. I will link these down below. Last thing I decided to do was actually refresh all of our electrical plates. I'm not sure how long they had been here, but I thought it'd be nice to just add some beautiful new clean white ones since they're not very expensive and they make the space look so beautiful. So here is how our 2023 kitchen makeover turned out. I think it looks so beautiful. It's hard to believe the kitchen used to look the way it did, even though it's still just as beautiful. I love having the bright whiteness in this kitchen. It just really creates a more subtle vibe in here. I also love the way these countertops turned out. I am shocked at how beautiful and inexpensive this makeover was. I was so nervous to actually paint the countertops and worried about what would happen if I messed up and honestly the directions were so easy and straightforward i watched many videos uh, provided by gianni you can see those on their website as well to make sure that i did it the way that was perfect for our house but you can really do this any which way you'd like i think it turned out beautiful i would love to know what you guys think in the comments down below the next large project in here is to add two new washer machines two new refrigerators, and we are also going to be putting hardwood floor in here. We don't actually use that trash compactor, so there's plenty of space to add lots of new things. So definitely don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you can join us on this journey as we transform this house into a home. Thank you again for watching today's video, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one real soon. Bye.